drinking apple juice tonight trying to prepare myself for what we're about to talk about as Jeffree Star would say I am about to spill the tea hey guys what is up welcome back to my channel this is a huge topic that's going on right now in the paranormal field and of course you guys can count on me to back it up with some facts if you don't know what we're talking about, basically about five days ago, beginning of July 2017, an article was posted and then Dread Central reposted the article. It looked factual because it had quotes and sources and names. And so of course I'm gonna dig up my own research. First, I'm going to state my credentials because on any given day, I'm gonna post one of these really big videos on my channel and somebody out there is gonna come to my channel and they've never been here before and they're gonna start calling me out on all kinds of stuff. So to bore my normal subscribers, I'll just state that I've been in paranormal production and I've been on several series and I've been on a lot of networks and I've had my own contracts and I call all paranormal shows out on their BS. I don't care who it is. I prefer to play devil's advocate because I like to give people the benefit of the doubt, but unfortunately, sometimes evidence speaks for itself, and in this case, that is what we have going on. So I actually printed the original article, which is titled, Ghosts of Shepherdstown Debunked as Staged. That was actually renamed that title. The first title was Oh, hang on a second. The first original title of this article was titled Real or Fake? Critics Claim Nick Groff's Show is Scripted, Witnesses Are Actors. And then they changed the title, Ghosts of Shepherdstown Debunked as Stage. Which, I mean, if you're gonna title something, just leave it as it is and then put an editor's note at the bottom. I was in newspaper, that's what you're taught in journalism, but screw, you know, regular protocol, right? I am not going to read this verbatim because it's going to be boring and I don't want to read it verbatim because that's boring to me too. So let's just chat about some key points that are in this article that was originally made. So it basically talks about, you know, the authentic side of paranormal versus all of the crap shows that have come out, you know, to be basically scripted or fake. And you know that we had a lot of intention behind Nick Groff from Ghost Adventures moving on to a new series with the hopes that he would have something good to present itself with. It says, unfortunately, Destination America, Ghost of Shepherdstown, um, it is a successful network, has recently come under the microscope. Um, they investigated West Virginia, Nick Groff, Bill, and Elizabeth Saint um, in the most haunted town in America. So basically this article by the Inquisitor, or however you say it, it said, quote, parts of Ghosts of Shepherdstown are staged and fake, um, basically being retold ghost stories and locations that are changed by the producers to make good television. Pretty sure I've told you guys that. I've worked in the industry, happens all the time. I've told you 99% of shows that are paranormal are fake. The only reason Zach has so much control over his show is because one, he's the executive producer, two, he's had a successful show for many years, 
and three, he's had several successful series on the Travel Channel. The executives at the Travel Channel, which is the network above the production company that Zach has by part in, they don't care what Zach does because they know he's going to do it right. So he has full leniency to do basically whatever he wants. In this sense, he also doesn't have to hire producers that represent the network to make sure that if they don't get good enough evidence that they're going to fake something or make up a story or a series. So as editors note, since the source was originally posted, it's been updated by the author to fix problems of their citation source. Well, the problem is, is that the source that they used is a guy that was actually on Ghosts of Shepherdstown as a witness to paranormal and he has a freaking profile on IMBD Pro which is a legitimate website guys let me tell you from working in production in order for this guy to have a profile he has his height and weight and his manager's contact information and um, you know associates and production companies that he's worked for he has basically his resume that's what IMBD Pro is this guy named Bradley Naughty, if that's how you say his name, he is listed as Terrence of Ghosts of Shepherdstown. If he's an actual witness, why did he have his name changed? Because he's not a freaking witness, y'all. He was hired by the production company. He's not the only one, by the way, of actors that have been featured on that show or other series. People are gonna automatically fire at me and they're gonna be like, oh, you have a problem with Nick Groff because you're a Ghost Adventures fan. Da 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 da. No, I don't actually. I don't, I like Nick Groff to be honest with you. I have no issue with Nick Groff. The problems that I am discussing right now, once again, critically think about what I'm saying. The problems I'm discussing right now has nothing to do with Nick Groff. This is the production company having control of Nick Groff forcing him to do these things or these witnesses that are actually actors on IMBD Pro, I bet you Nick didn't even know that they were actors. I bet the production staff and the production company and the production crew hired them to come in and basically faked it to Nick. Nick may have not even known. He doesn't have that much pull on Destination America or TLC because he hasn't been there for seasons and years the way Ghost Adventures was on with the Travel Channel. I am trying to teach you guys the aesthetics behind how networks work, how production companies work, how chains of command work. Yes, Nick Groff is an executive producer of Ghosts of Shepherdstown, but he doesn't have the pull Zach does because Zach has had season after season of success with the travel channel he has had series after series deadly possessions paranormal challenge um what else aftershocks ghost adventures he did catacombs they trust him because he's done it for so long they know he's a hard worker they know he's doing it legitimately <sighs> yeah it sucks it makes nick look bad it may it's probably i would say it's 80 percent not nick's fault i would assume nick doesn't even know what was going on or if he did he had no control over it so before anyone attacks me and says it's because i'm not a nick Groff fan Oh, nay, nay, that is not my problem. My problem this whole time that I've been doing YouTube is all of the fake production companies. It is not the cast. I have no problem with any cast members. The problem I have is the production companies putting out fake paranormal shows because we call it, right? All of us, including me, are actual paranormal investigators. We legitimately know what is going on and what an actual EMF reading is what witnesses act like when you talk to them in person because most of us have done it in the raw field of actually doing interviews and investigating. You have to call a spade a spade in the industry. If you see something that looks staged or awkward and uncomfortable in one of these series and not just Nick series, we know there's other ones out there. We know in our gut, this is not real. And to top off, this, I mean, I don't know why these people put out an article, you know, basically literally showing that they have found at least one witness on IMBD Pro. That's not fake, y'all. In order for one actor or a producer or a TV personality or anything of the above needs to get an IMBD Pro profile, they have to be like approved. Usually they have to be a part of like the Actors Guild 
Um, and it costs monthly. You can't make a fake IMBD Pro profile. You have to purposely show your skills and what you have been on. I actually used to have one for Paranormal Challenge and the few other things that I had done, but I had to pay for it out of pocket. And honestly, I didn't have it on auto pay and then I forgot to pay it. It was like 50 or $60 a month just to keep up your IMBD Pro profile, which for actors, it's really good, right? Because actors need that for like their basically digital resume to send to production companies. Or in this case, a production company could be on set and be like, okay, let's get on IMBD Pro. I need to find uh, four witnesses for Ghosts of Shepherdstown, but they need to be in the area of Shepherdstown of um, West Virginia within 10 miles. And they'll get on IMBD Pro. If they have a pro profile, you have to pay for it monthly so that these producers and executives can access it. And then they send mass emails out to everybody on IMBD Pro or to their management company or whoever's representing them as an actor and says, I need these people. I will pay them $150 per day to be on set plus per diem, which I've taught you guys is food for the day, which is usually 60 to $100 per day per person. And then these actors are like, cool, I'll be there at five. When's the call sheet? Whatever, what's going on? <sighs> I'm just, I get so emotional about this because it's like, finally, I'm not the only one calling out these production companies on this. This has nothing to do with Nick Groff. I like Nick Groff as a person, but the production company holds way more power over Nick because they have to make sure they deliver a certain amount of evidence and a certain amount of storyline to the network or the network, in this case, Destination America, I don't know if it switched to TLC or if that's just Paranormal Lockdown, but in this case, if they don't deliver to the network, the network cuts them off. Do you guys not get, it is thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to produce one of these shows. You guys have no idea the cost for one producer to be on set, which I believe they have several on Ghosts of Shepherdstown, one producer makes $100,000 a year. That was a base salary as a producer in the industry that I was in. Plus you have PAs, which costs a lot of money. Plus you have Nick's salary. He's the biggest star of the show, right? Nobody really knows how much he makes per episode, right? It's a newer season, a newer show. He's probably not making max because they wanna make sure it succeeds past the three season hump that I have also told you guys about. Woo, getting a little heated up in here. When Dread Central got a hold of this article and it went like viral because of the paranormal community, because we are all such hardcore paranormal fans, paranormal junkies. The minute it got in Jason Hawes' hands, Nick knew he was done for. The second series of Ghosts of Shepherdstown has not hit yet. It comes out like July 10th or 12th or something. If Nick didn't do damage control with the amount of followers Jason Hawes has from Ghost Hunters, it could have failed the show before it started. I was really thrilled, to be honest, to see Jason come forward. He deleted his original post. I didn't get a screenshot of it. Basically calling out, you know, saying, wow, look at this article, this is BS. Okay, so then um, all of a sudden out of nowhere, uh, Jason's like, I'm gonna do a Facebook Live video. So I'm just gonna kind of recap a few things he said. So first, Jason says he doesn't know Nick's involvement when he originally read the article. He didn't know it was Nick Groff. Uh, but it says Nick Groff in there uh, from Ghost Adventures, so that, no. Can't, can't let you get away with that one, Jason. I'm sorry, my man. He, uh, Jason says, Nick is a stand-up guy truly interested in the paranormal field. Well, duh, we know that. Uh, Nick, um, Jason says, there's a lot of BS in the field. We just, you know, people that just want to be seen on TV, um, they sell themselves short, run around in the dark, um, and Nick's never been that kind of guy. Nick calls Jason, but he says he doesn't want to get into the politics of the article and the discussion with Nick. The politics are the production company, okay? The politics is the production company pays Nick Groff 
to have food on his table for his children. Nick has to do damage control in order to continue to get a paycheck from his production company and Destination America. If he doesn't get on, I bet you a producer saw Jason Hawes post that and was like, Nick, you better get on that phone right now and fix this because this could ruin your show before it comes out on July 10th or 12th. The politics is that, that Jason doesn't want to get involved in is He's saying, Nick is a stand-up guy, he's a great guy. He wouldn't do this, but the production company would. Hello, the production company has soulless people that do not care because all they see is dollar signs. That's all they see. If it's a successful series, all they're going to see is money, 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 money. And then Jason starts rambling on about BS media sources and news sources, oh stop. Jason, you're buried yourself. You can't, don't beat around the bush. Just say, um, I'm trying to help Nick do damage control here. I messed up. And instead he's doing this like weird, like awkward, uh, 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 and I'm like, oh my God, you're repeating yourself, stop. You're not doing a very good job with this damage control thing. Jason says, I'm not backtracking anything I said here. Actually, you kind of are. You kind of are. It says Nick's show was false and fake and it has, obvious um, actors on IMBD Pro, and now you're saying, oh, Nick's a stand-up guy, he wouldn't do it, but I'm not gonna get into the politics of it. And then he says, I was really sad when I read the article, Nick wouldn't pull BS, it's not his style. You're right, Nick wouldn't, but the production company would. What have I been saying for the past year, you guys? What have I been saying for the past year? Other shows that will have, you know, Nick is sincere, and I believe, I believe Nick when we spoke, is what Jason said. Well, what did he say? Because you never gave a direct quote. You never said, Nick said this. All he keeps saying is, I believe Nick. What exactly did he say then to you, Jason? Do you not want to give a quote because you don't want to quote Nick on it? So basically he says, story versus Nick. Nick's gonna post on social media. I'm gonna pull the article off of my Facebook page because I made a mistake and I posted it too early. I looked into it too soon before I posted it. I'm not backtracking on it. He keeps repeating that statement. When someone, like I don't know if you guys have ever studied psychology, but when someone's repetitively saying a certain term, especially in something like this, usually they're like, oh no, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. And that's like totally falsification. Like you know when someone's not telling the truth by saying, I'm not backtracking. Uh, oh, but I said, I'm not backtracking. What are you saying then, bro? He keeps saying, to each their own. Um, you know, and then the other guy sitting next to him says, there were quotes from sources. And then Jason starts to use his show for credibility. And I'm like, oh, you should have been quiet because there's a lot of, you know, things that happen with ghost hunters. You know, one thing was Grant's shirt was being tugged by a fishing line at one point. I think at the Stanley Hotel, you know, Grant had claimed his shirt was getting pulled and they ended up, someone pointed out that it was like another crew member. So Jason should not have just drug himself in there. It's like, it's like you saw Nick drowning in the lava pool and then Jason jumped right in with him. And I'm like, shh, just be quiet. You went too far, man. You know, Grant and um, Jason were not executive producers of their series. They didn't really have a pull. They were just considered cast. There's a reason, and I've said this before, Grant and Jason did not make nearly the money um, source that Zach Bagans did, and even Nick Groff for that matter, because Zach and Nick were the executive producers of their series, Ghost Adventures, and Jason and Grant were just cast. There is a huge difference in salary when you're looking at cast salary versus executive producer salary. Huge difference. Um, once again, Jason's like, I believe what Nick told me on the phone. Okay, what the hell did he say on the phone? Like, tell us what, give us a quote. Nick said um, he wouldn't do that. No, he never says that. And I find that really awkward because that is Jason not wanting to tell a lie, probably. He says, give Nick the benefit of the doubt, tensions on his show. Maybe some people don't like that he's doing well. Oh, come on, that's not it. I love Nick. I wanted the best for him. I wanted to see him succeed. I wanted to see his series succeed, but unfortunately, there is obvious a difference between the pull he has at the production companies now that he's working at versus when he actually owned the production company that him and Zach founded. And unfortunately, it's showing through now that the production company he's with, along with the network, they're pulling the strings. That's just the way it works. It's the way it works.
And then he keeps saying, it is what it is. Yeah, obviously, Jason, we got that. It is what it is. Whoever found out one of these witnesses, and there's been several others from Ghosts of Shepherdstown that have been found on IMBD Pro. It's not the first one. And now, like, Jason's doing this awkward, like, uh, 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 uh. And by the end of his Facebook Live video, I was like, eh. Just for the record, I have never said this on the channel, but I'm going to say it now. If we look back at a couple of tweets, we will find one from Nick that Nick states clearly to his fan base that he did not quit Ghost Adventures. And around the same time frame, Aaron tells people on Twitter that Nick was fired from Ghost Adventures for doing series behind the Travel Channel's back. So what is my opinion on this whole mess? First of all, addressing the fact that Nick was fired, you do not ever, ever get in a contract with a production company. You're like basically signing your life away in blood. If you've followed me for a while, you have probably seen my episode where I actually share my contracts with you guys from networks. You never, ever, get in a contract with a production company and sign another contract with another production company or network for that matter. In fact, I could guarantee you guys liability and legality that's involved with these contracts because there are pages and pages. I bet you when Nick did that on, you know, behind the travel channel's back, behind Zach's back. So basically what they're saying happened is, Nick had a contract with Ghost Adventures, with the Travel Channel, probably with Zach as an executive producer, with their production company, and without informing anyone or getting anyone's approval, he went behind their back to Destination America, TLC, whoever owns those major networks, with a different production company, and I told you guys he signed up for those three series. So the first one was with John Tenney, I can't remember what it was. The second one's Paranormal Lockdown with Katrina, and the third one was Ghosts of Shepherdstown. And basically, whichever one was the best, the production company was going to keep, which is why I was shocked that Paranormal Lockdown and Ghosts of Shepherdstown got renewed. That was really shocking to me. John Tenney's show failed, unfortunately, and basically he dropped, Nick Groff dropped John Tenney like a hot pocket. And I feel so bad for John Tenney because he's a really cool dude. You guys should look him up. He did like years and years of research. He worked for um, Unsolved Mysteries, is that what it was called? Like back in the day. So the dude is awesome, but Nick did not help him through that as an executive producer. Producer, and so I felt really bad for the dude. You never ever sign another contract behind your production company's back. Like I wouldn't doubt he got like sued or had to pay some sort of a settlement or had to like forfeit a part of his like past salary or something. I bet you something went down that nobody knows about because that is a big no-no. And I feel really bad for Zach. I can't imagine Zach and Nick created Ghost Adventures together. They were signing all this stuff, doing these shows together for years, and then all of a sudden Nick went behind his back. I was impressed for about five seconds with Jason Hawes for actually calling out production companies and other people in the industry like I have, because seriously, I'm sorry, but the paranormal industry cannot be fake. Like, why? Because there's so many investigators out there now that know the truth, that know what it's like, that know what investigating is, that know what the signals for data collection are. We know when something's fake. These production companies have to stop at some point the fake stuff. I told you guys, I have forfeit several contracts with several production companies because they hire me, they put me in contract, and then at the last minute, they slap a script down in front of me. And I'm like, dude, I'm not gonna fake myself out. I'm not gonna sell myself out. I have worked way too hard to get the reputation that I'm at. And I really want to be an executive producer on a series that I'm on so I have control over it as well so that I don't have to deal with crap like this biting you in the butt because you didn't do something right or because you're letting producers run things improperly, people are gonna find out eventually if you've had actors on there that are basically pretending to be eyewitnesses. Also, keep in mind, I've discussed this before, I've had nine people, I think nine people at least, I think I had one more um, email me like three or four weeks ago, nine people 
from Ghost of Shepherdstown, because it's a real city, it's a real town, um, let me know that the whole show was fake, that the locations they even went to wasn't real, that the people involved weren't real. This isn't the first time I've heard this, so am I shocked? No, not really. I knew that the truth was gonna come out eventually because we as paranormal enthusiasts are so sick of the fake crap. And I'm teaching people out there to not be afraid to call things out. And as, you know, documentary workers like we are, we like the real raw stuff, doing investigating is what we do. So of course we're gonna go freaking investigate people on a series to see if it's legitimate or not because that is what we do in real life. We investigate entities. Why wouldn't we investigate eyewitnesses that are involved with these fake ass shows? I respected Jason for about five seconds till he basically retracted his statement and he retracted it because Nick's doing damage control. They are friends. Jason said at the end of his live video that he's gonna have Nick come on and talk about his show. Jason's not working in paranormal anymore. He only has like a podcast. So of course he has to make amends with Nick so that Nick comes on his podcast because he has nothing else going in paranormal for him. So I mean, do you see what I'm talking about in this industry? It's a dog eat dog industry. Jason backed out of his statement, which is a super shame. But once again, I have nothing against Jason either. I have nothing against Nick. I have nothing against Amy Allen. I've talked about her. I have nothing against anybody. I have things against the paranormal production companies that are behind this stuff because there's so much fake stuff, you guys. And this isn't like a reality series. This isn't Big Brother where they can go fake stuff. We don't live on set, so all that drama looks good. We actually investigate, so we know what's real and what's not. I will still stand by um, Zach's legitimacy. I know people get annoyed with me saying that, but I worked on set with him. Um, I've worked with him at events that he's been to, like Scarefest. He's done like private investigation at the Stanley Hotel. Um, <sighs> and other places, like I've met up with him and Dave Schrader, when Billy was with him. Zach doesn't fake stuff. Like I know people get mad, I think because Zach has really set the bar high in this industry and it's really hard to surpass him because he gets legitimate evidence. He doesn't have to fake witnesses. I don't even know if they always have their witnesses lined up. It's one of those things that when you start the investigation, when you go there, the person might be like, oh yeah, well, Sally down at the Piggly Wiggly, she witnessed some stuff. So then the crew's like, oh God, we go down to the Piggly Wiggly right now. It wasn't even planned. That's the way an investigation is supposed to go. That is the way paranormal investigating does go. They have Jeff Blander on their team with Ghost Adventures all these years, who is a phenomenal researcher. He does podcasts. He is legitimate. He makes phone calls. He lives in freaking Canada and works his butt off to make sure that they have an accurate historian doing the history of ghost adventures. I feel like my work ethic in paranormal comes from seeing the things Zach has made his crew do. From seeing the things Zach has created with his paranormal you know, production company and all of the things he's done. And I think that people get upset when they see him successful and that nobody has reached his limit yet. I think it upsets people and they get jealous because Nick breaks off and there's all this rumor and drama that Nick was fired and he wasn't fired and he quit and then it was because of the demon house and so everybody sees Nick break off and they want him to surpass Zach. Like, who is going to surpass Zach? People gave Zach crap for a long time when he first came out because he was this like, aggressive guy that like, you know, intimidated the spirits and like yelled at him, but he's toned it way down. He was also like not sure of his character in the beginning. You know, he was trying to create like, it's a fine line. I go through it with Ghost Girl. There's a fine line be behind Crystal as a person and Crystal as Ghost Girl. So you have to decide like, where is that line gonna lay? And I think that at, at the beginning, that was where Zach had struggled, but he has really proven himself. Like. He's opened this museum. He's worked on other productions. Like he, he got into the catacombs. How many people can say they found people that would follow them and show them down, you know, the paths and maps of the catacombs? Not a lot of people can say they've done that. He's paid his dues. People need to start giving him credit. I wanted Nick to succeed. I still want him to succeed, but he doesn't have the power over the production company. That's what all of this comes down to you guys. Everything I have been teaching you is 
It's the power of the production companies. It's the power of the networks and people, even if you're Nick Groff, you don't have control over it. And it's sad and it sucks. And that's the way it is because Hollywood and money. And that's about it. And I'm assuming that is probably why Zach follows me on social media because he watches my YouTubes. He told me he does. And I think he respects that I am doing what he does in a different way, which is he does the raw side of paranormal and I'm kind of the raw side of calling out production companies and other fake shows because it's like somebody's got to do it. Someone's got to not be afraid to stand up and be like, this is not Amy Allen. This has nothing to do with Nick or even Ghost Hunters. This has to do with the production companies faking it. And when is enough going to be enough? When is it going to be enough? What do you guys think of everything I said? I'm probably going to get haterade for this video because whatever. I just don't have time for it. If you don't like what I have to say, please don't follow me. If you like what I say, <laughs> subscribe to my channel. Make sure you give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you guys follow me on social media. What do you guys want to talk about next? Leave me comments below and I will catch you guys next time. Hell yeah.